everyone. Welcome back to the Sanctuary Podcast. We're so glad that you guys are here. My name is Kevin Butterfield, hosting again as we dive into investigating life and faith in Jesus Christ and talking to amazing guests about their story in God's story. So today I am so stoked to introduce and welcome you to a good friend, Jislani Dorsonville. Everyone what say up? hello. I felt when I did that, like we should have special effects right now. Jislani Dorsonville. Yeah, Jislani Dorsonville. Everyone round Sorry of applause. That's good. Uh, Jislani has been part of the sanctuary community for a few years. Jislani, how long has it been? Someone asked me the other other day, like how long I've been at sanctuary. And it's like six years now. Wow. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. It must have been like 12 when that was <laughs> taking place. No, it's, what? It's good. No, because you're so young. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm so old. Everyone's young. So, uh, Jislani, uh, you've been involved in Sanctuary for like six years now. Yeah. Um, and uh, Jislani, you've been involved in a myriad of ways mm-hmm. in the Sanctuary community. Can you kind of list some of them out? Yeah. I've been involved with the worship team. Mm. Um I think like two years ago, social media, which happened by accident, I just started taking stories and um, now I'm on the social media team. Um, cafe. Yeah. And I think that's about it. Uh, there was, you're forgetting one really crucial one. Wait, what? During, <laughs> during lockdown, okay. you and Heather spearheaded oh, a whole yeah. social media... Yeah you know, sensation. We did. We you did know, do you that. guys were officially YouTubers, influencers, mm-hmm. changing the nice. world. What was that? What was the, the, the life changing program called? Um, what was it called? I don't, what sanctuary. I'm Li- forgetting live what, from the living room, live from the living room or live at five. No, not that live from the living room. Is that what it's called? Did I get I it right? I think it was live from. Yeah. Well, uh, Zach, was that what it was called? Zach live from the living room. Yeah. Uh, it was like what? Tuesdays at three o'clock or something like that. Yeah. And it was and described. We played games. Yeah. Games. We did games, challenges. Um, we would ask our viewers to name that tune. So we would play random songs and then whoever like typed in first the lyric won. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm so glad we're not in quarantine or lockdown anymore, mm-hmm. but I think we may need to have a reunion. I a think reunion. we may need to, yeah, I think we may need to have like a live from the living room, you know, reboot. I think that maybe would be for awesome. that'd be awesome. So uh, <laughs> I, I believe some of those episodes are still online. You can check they, them out at our Sanctuary CT YouTube yep. page, and you can check those out. That'd be fun to watch, uh, to go back through. Yeah. Um, you just uh, reminded me, I made like a ukulele song or something over, um, like people would just comment what the topic was that they wanted me to make a lyric of, and, and I did. It was so fun. <laughs> No way. Yeah. So just improv on yeah. the spot. Well, not on the spot. I just took like Freestyle. the categories that people like wanted That's and awesome. like wrote a little song and just, I wrote a song about my friends. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, we, get, we got to bring that back. We could. I, can I tell you, that is the first time I've ever heard of, of really? ukulele freestyle. We could have ukulele freestyle battles. Okay. So me versus. Ukulele flow. Uk- I don't know. Ukulele flow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that sounds fun. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Jislani, um, you and I share a common passion besides Jesus, besides sanctuary community, besides mm-hmm. worship and music and all that stuff. Uh, you've been involved in the coffee world for a while, right? The coffee world? Um, for about like two years. Two years. Yeah. In what capacity have you experienced life in the coffee world? Um, You know... To be honest, I actually don't really, like, coffee is not really my thing, per se. Like, I drink coffee, but, like, don't ask me about... We're about to wrap up this podcast. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) Keep going. Um, Yeah, I think I've just, like, done jobs, like, being a barista. Um, And I think the reason why I even, like, gravitated towards being a barista is because I like the environment and, like, meeting the new people and also, like, regulars. And so that is probably my only reason... Why I worked at a coffee shop for two years, not because of the coffee, but because of the people. So uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Because I can I tell you, as someone who frequents coffee shops, there are a lot of baristas who definitely um, shouldn't be working with people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, for sure. They, they should yep. be left alone to make coffee. Yep. But that's awesome. 
you like hosting people. Yeah. We're going to get back to that. Cool. <laughs> okay. We're going to get back to that. But you are a trained barista. You've done that before. Mm-hmm. You have worked in coffee. Yeah. And um, yeah, that is awesome. Um, I've been in full-time ministry for 20 years, and it, I wish I could spend two years someday getting paid to make coffee. I mean, maybe you can. I probably could, but. It's still a possibility. Yeah, that's probably true. Someday. Side hustle. Side hustle. Oh, for real. Yeah. Anyways, um, but I am a bit of a coffee snob. Someone, if someone asked for a coffee that I don't want to make, I'd be like, no. Yeah. No, no soup for you. You're no done. soup for you. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> what? Is, what? <laughs> I've never heard of that phrase. Oh. Like, no soup for you. No soup for you. That's It's a reference to uh, last century, uh, the Seinfeld show. So look up the soup Nazi. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, but don't worry about it. Yeah, it's I would okay. skip that show when it was on the channel. Yeah, no worries. I'm sorry. That's all right. Wow. Two, you broke my heart twice on, on the show. No, I would joking. love to learn more about coffee. It's just the place that I worked at didn't really specialize in coffee. They were more specialized in food because mm. it was run by a chef. Yeah. So that's good. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Coffee All class right. with Kevin. Well, I am, I am pretty passionate about food as well. So uh, <laughs> here's where I dive into um, one of the, the, uh, the many topics we could talk about. But, um, Jislani, you love adventures. That's one thing I know about you, and adventures with Jesus. So yeah. we're going to talk about your newest, latest adventure over the last year, year and a half yeah. um, of uh, a journey called the 18-inch journey. Mm-hmm. So Jislani, tell, uh, for those who don't know what we're about to talk about yeah. and how it's impacted your worlds and your, your life with Jesus, uh, what is the 18-inch 18, 18 journey? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I was trying to figure out how to explain this because it's it's hard if you haven't done it. Mm. But basically, it's a heart school. Mm. Um, and so the creators, Jonathan and Melissa Helser, are worship leaders. Um, you guys yeah. probably know them from their songs like No Longer Slaves, yep. Ain't No Grave, Raise mm. a Hallelujah. So they are the ones who created those songs. Um, and they just wanted to create a heart school for young adults Um just to learn more about Jesus and emotional health mm. and how to be creative with the Lord in different avenues. Um, and they also just noticed a lot of people around their age were just getting burnt out. Mm. And so they were like, well, we want to create a hard school for young adults to show them how to be emotionally healthy, healthy spiritually and healthy physically. Yeah. So I would say phase one, 18 inch journey is a culmination of those things. So uh, even the descriptor, 18-inch journey, what does mm-hmm. that mean? Yeah, so they chose the name because it's actually the measurement from your head to your heart. Mm. Love that, 18 inches. Mm-hmm. So getting really your faith, which can be like cognitive. Yeah. It can be cerebral. It can be, you know, in our minds to get it really also in our hearts. Yeah, Yeah. For and sure. to let it impact our heart, living from the heart. Mm-hmm. So there's phase one, there's phase two. Mm-hmm. So can kind of give us a synopsis of what what is phase one Yeah, and what was phase one for you? Gotcha. So um, I'm going to give like a picture to help you guys understand what phase one was. Phase one was a two-month school. Um, they say they were- Where was it? In North Carolina, Sophia, North Carolina. Mm. Um, they say they would actually call it an intensive because it's like 65 days- all planned out for you you're on a schedule and it's like go 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 Mm. um but the picture i would paint to describe phase one is like let's say you walk into a room and there's this long table um and on the table is all your past history triggers all the stuff that you try to hide from like all the like ugly stuff that Mm. you don't want people to see um but there are people around the table And those people are Melissa, Jonathan, and you have a one-on-one when you do phase one, which is like um, kind of like someone that you can process how 18 inches going for you and they help you like navigate some like walls you're hitting. Um, And then also on the table is Jesus, God the Father, and Holy Spirit. Mm. And there's an empty seat next to Jesus. And Jesus is like, hey, come come over, take a seat. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that's how I would describe phase one and how phase one for me was life changing. Mm. Um, it was so, I honestly didn't know what I was signing up for (laughs) 
like I applied and felt like the Lord was like, okay, we're, we're going to do this. But even throughout the interview process, I was still like, is this a worship school? And they're like, no, this is not a worship school. Mm. Although you do lots of worship. Lots of worship. And so that's With what two I, amazing worship leaders. Right. And so I was like, okay, it's not a worship school. And um, during the interview, they were saying like, yeah, let's say you're in a worship session and like you get a word for someone and you go over to pray for them, we would slap your hand away. And I was like, what in the, what school is this? And their heart behind that is like, you're not here to serve, you're here to be served. Mm. Um, and so that- And with that sometimes- Yeah. Is sometimes even with the serving, there's sometimes a performance side of that mm -hmm. too. That it's so easy, right? Yeah. Sometimes to go from a place of going, hey, I wanna serve you, to also, I wanna perform with my gift. Mm -hmm. To capture your attention, yep. or to, to what we call yeah, prove worth or yeah. hot wire connection, mm -hmm. and that's a bigger thing. So, yeah. so you're like, what is going on? I'm like, what, what is this? <laughs> um, and yeah, I got there, and it, it was like life changing. And never have I ever done something like that. And it was like the hardest thing I've ever mm. done in my life because I'm like becoming aware now of like, oh, that's why I do this, or that's why I hide here when like I feel uncomfortable, or that's why I cope with laughing here because I'm actually, I don't want to talk about this. And mm. Mm. so, yeah, just like my eyes were being opened and yeah, it was, it was a game changer. And so I went back for phase two, which is a six month program. And we got- wow, from 65 days to six to for to six months mm -hmm. it's huge yeah it was huge yeah. yeah um yeah so in phase one they taught us their values and in phase two basically we got to live out those values um with i got a privilege to stand around 19 other people and do the wholeness journey with them mm. um yeah so that is like the basics of phase one and phase two but once again, like, you won't really understand until you, like, do sure. it. You're giving us a snapshot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of So how did you find out about this thing? Good question. So um, I knew – so their group is called Cages Birds. Um, that's their, like, music group and also, like, the shop that they run. Um, and they also sell, like, leather journals. And my friends, Cindy and Sarah, would geek out over their leather, leather journals, and I would just be like, you guys are weird. Why are you so obsessed with journals? <laughs> They're just journals. Um, and just never understood, like, the behind the scenes of why they supported the ministry so much. Um, and then I just remember my friend Katie invited me over to her house and she was like, Hey, do you know about the cages birds? I'm like, yeah, something like, you know, Cindy and Sarah, they like, make some journals. They make some journals. Um, and she was like, okay, I know you're into like culinary arts and like food and stuff. They have a baking program. You should check it out. And I'm like, Oh, a baking program. Cool. Um, can you send me the link? And she was like, yeah, yeah, I got you. So she sends me a link. The link is the 18 inch journey link mm. and I click it and I read the description and I'm like, this is not a culinary school at all, like <laughs> at all. <laughs> and while I was reading it, I felt, I felt like my heart was like, yes, we should do this. And I just felt really confused because I was on track to go to culinary school and like seeing this program and just it just didn't make sense to like what I was picturing. Mm. Um, and God even saying like, yes, we're gonna apply. I'm like, okay, don't understand, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So long story short, that's how I found wow. out through my friend Katie saying that it was a baking program, but it wasn't. So it was really a God set up saying, it, let's yep. talk about food, which you're already heading towards to go, yeah. let's get to your heart. Wow. Yep. Um, so, Let's talk about, well, there's a couple of different aspects. One of it is, is it sounds like uh, there's a, a lot of creativity that happens down there. Mm -hmm. But part of that is, is that, you know, um, you're creative. You, you do mm -hmm. music. Yeah. We know you play ukulele and Sometimes. freestyle and ukulele, yep. you know. Uh, <laughs> we know that you've been part of the worship community here, integral yeah. part of the worship community here. Um, 
You also do photography, and really good photography. You guys definitely have to check out Jay's Gislani's uh, photography, and uh, um, as well. Um, where have I want to get back to Aitana's journey? But where have how has creativity been like um, a place of connection for you with Jesus? Mm, yeah, I would say there have been many like areas of where I could be creative and meet Jesus. But I would say one specific area is um, with food and the table. Um, at 18 inch, I really learned how to linger at a table. I really learned how to be intentional at a table and like even how you set up a plate or where the forks and knives should be and where the cup should go and how should the table be designed. Mm. Um, and like, even in that I was like experiencing God through me just being creative and like seeing different colors and wanting to put it on a table down to like food. Um, and being able to like, oh, I think this onion spice or garlic or whatever would go really well in this dish. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but it's just gonna it's just gonna work. And like the end result, like actually like being so beautiful and like learning like since Jesus lives in me, like he's actually um, like showing me and actually doing cooking with me, if that mm. makes sense. Um, so for you, even in the creativity side, but even in 18 inch journey, you just talked about the metaphor of the table. Yeah. Of being uh, the 18 inch journey, at least phase one, mm -hmm. is sitting at a table with safe people. Yeah. And with a good God and learning how to be you as well as who he's called you to be in a safe place. Yeah. At the table. Mm -hmm. And so now you're talking about a literal table, mm -hmm. learning how to um, use your creativity in design. Yeah. But it sounds like it's also like you're preparing a table for a purpose, you know, Yeah. which is like Psalm 23. The, you know, the Lord is my shepherd. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. But yeah. the idea of preparing, there's an intention there. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. really discovered that was a first for you, being yeah. intentional with tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the small details and like, oh, everything here is actually placed intentionally. And it's not just there for no reason. Mm. Yeah. And how that paired with food. Yeah. You said, how does it pair with No, you? well, I'm, and it did for you. But so, yeah, talk to me about that. Like, yeah. what were some lessons you learned? Some things on this journey about yourself and about cooking, creativity, the table. Mm. You know, you said, learn, you know, that Jesus was cooking with you. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I think I learned a lot through the table. Um, I think how it has affected me personally is like, oh, when someone, like in phase one, when they literally served us, like we didn't, we couldn't like, like bring a dish to the kitchen and clean it. They're like, no, we, we can do it. Um, and like even them setting up the table and like taking long hours to make meals for us and being intentional with like conversation. Um, like there was some part of me that believed a lie that like, oh, I'm not worth anyone's time mm. like people gotta go people gotta go somewhere so like just make sure whatever you say is quick so they can pick it up and like be on their way which you probably learned somewhat living in first of all living in fairfield county everything's yeah. fast paced mm -hmm. and we value time more than anything yeah and so but working in a cafe where people are like grabbing their coffee to go yeah. i want i ordered it online so i just gotta walk in i don't even have to talk to anybody right yeah you know, I don't even have to hand you cash. I'm pulling out my Apple Pay. Boom, yep. I'm out. Like, they can order it through an app and don't even have to interact with you. Right. They can pick it up and go. So that's just cultural, but yeah. you're talking even more. Like you're that even related to just going, yeah, for someone to invest that much time in me, mm -hmm. there's a feeling of unworthiness Yeah, that's there. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so that lie was flipped on its head and it was like, actually, no, you are worth my time mm. and you are worth my eye contact. Cause like 
nowadays people can't even look you in the eye and they're just like talking to you like this. And I mean, I was one of those people. And then going to phase one and them even mentioning like, we actually do a lot of eye contact here. And at first I was like, why do they keep looking at me? It's so awkward. It's uncomfortable. And then stop looking at me. (laughs) And then towards the end, I was able to like look at someone and say, hey, thank you for serving me. Mm. Rather than, yeah, yeah, thank you. So that was confronting at first. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we all the phase one students were like, have you guys noticed that they look at us a lot when they talk? Like, we were just like, this is so not normal in our culture. Mm. So. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about it? Now, I'm like, I can make eye contact all day. I mean, when I did phase two, and then had the phase one students come, like I was that person that was like looking at them and listening to what they were saying. And mm-hmm. like I could see, um, like there was this one girl who I could literally see myself. And I was like, that's where I was when I came into phase one of like looking down, not really like looking at people or like, you know, listening to what they were saying because you just felt so unworthy. Um, and like just seeing her process through day one, through day 65, of like her holding her head up and like mm. asking me a question directly rather than just, uh, I mean, if you want, like, but saying like, hey, Jay, do you think you could help me with this? Mm. It's amazing. Life changing. Wow. Yeah. So let's keep talking about the table. Cool. Because I, I really actually do <laughs> want to go. Yeah. Everything you're saying, I'm like, let's dive into that. But let's, I want to go back to the table because I yeah. know that you're passionate about it. And I think it is a concept that we need to understand. So. Keep talking to me about your journey with cooking, the table, yeah, and with the Lord. Um, well, it started when I was little. Um, there would be a time where, like, well, actually, I feel like some people could relate. Um, like your parents saying, like, there's food at home. And you're like, there's no food at home. And you look in the fridge, and if it's if there's no, like, cheeseburgers or french fries, you're like, there's no food. And so me and my brother would constantly say that until my mom was like, there's food at home. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And, like, just being in the kitchen and, like, babysitting my brother and, like, okay, we got to eat. What are we going to do? And, like, looking in the fridge and, like, well, this can go together and this can go together. And, like, if I just scramble it up. It'll be quick and easy. Um, And I don't know. I just fell in love with, like, being able to, like, put things together and it, like, being good and not understanding why. But, like, I just love experimenting with food. And my brother just being so, like, (laughs) oh, my God, this food is amazing. Keep cooking. Keep doing it. So I just kept cooking. Um, But then that all, like, stopped when I told my mom, like, I think I want to be a chef when I grow up. And... Um, she was like, well, listen, chefs don't make a lot of money. And like, that's like the most, like what I heard from that conversation of like, oh, if you do this, like you're not going to make any money. Right. Um, and so I, so the maternal instinct of protection kicks in Mm -hmm. to say like, I want you to not be struggling in life. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're hearing exactly that limitation. (laughs) Yeah. And oh man, my bubble just got burst. Yeah. Someone popped my balloon. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. So, yeah, from hearing that, I was like, well, then there must be no point. If I'm not going to make any money, then Mm. why do it? Um, And, like, so I just stopped cold turkey, and I just remember my brother saying, like, why did you stop cooking? I'm like, there's no point. They don't make any money, so. This is Denver? This is Denver, yes. where's my food? (laughs) It's like, what happened? And I'm like, bro, get get you a cup of noodles, hot water, Some ramen. you're great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he was he was upset, but then he got over it. Um, and then when I so I completely forgot about that childhood dream of wanting to be a chef, mm. and I was just like remembering in high school, like, what do I do? I don't know. What do, what do I even want to do? What do I major in? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so the whole like college application process was very interesting for me because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And so um, like so many people who are like, you're 18 years old. Yeah. Put down what you want to do for the rest of your life. Yep. And I, I wish I knew I could take a gap year. Like yeah. you actually if you don't know if you want to go to college, you actually don't have to go. All right. You, that's that's big right now because yes. there are young people who listen to this podcast. Yeah. 
Just True. Lonnie, say that again right into that camera and tell them. <laughs> if you don't know what you want to do, you do not have to go to college. There is no pressure. Okay. Take your time. Now, I'm going to look in this camera and say, <laughs> as a parent, <laughs> that is a scary concept. But allow your kids to maybe have a gap year, maybe to do something with their heart. Yeah. That will open up doors for their future as well. Yep. All right. Yeah. Keep going. Um, and so I found out about DTS, YOM DTS, Discipleship Training School, um, through my friend Sarah, who went to Mexico and did one. And she came back, and I just remembered, like. Which often is a purposeful gap year for people. Yeah. To go away for yeah. a year or six months. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another form of similar but very different, but a, an intentional year of working on your heart relationship with Jesus. Yeah. 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 Um, and I just remember her coming back and, like, seeing, like, whoa, she's completely different. Like, who is this person? And just, like. Having a thought of like, ooh, Lord, I want that. Um, but not like praying about it or anything. And um, this DTS school called Life Around the Table um, emailed me saying like, hey, you should join. You should apply to our um, DTS in January. I think it happened in the fall or something. Um, and it, they said like, it's Life Around the Table. It's a hospitality DTS. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, and so then I ended up applying after talking to the Lord about it. And I just remember <laughs> I told Sarah like what DTS I was doing because they all have different topics. Mm. And she was like, oh, you're doing a cooking DTS. And I was like, I don't want to do a cooking DTS. I don't want to <laughs> like, I don't know what's, what's going to happen. Like, and then I ended up going, um, and like, it was amazing. Mm. Like we had an assignment where, um, there were six students and we had to come up with like a, a menu type of thing. And so two of us were in apps, two of us were in the main course, and then two of us were in desserts. And I was in the appetizers, and me and my friend Elizabeth decided to do like a Garden of Eden theme. Whoa. And so we did like a big salmon and like vegetables, fruit, and we had like four detox waters named after like the four rivers that ran through Garden of Eden. It was so That's much fun awesome. and everyone was like, oh my God, this is like amazing. And like the color on the table mm. was just beautiful. Um, and then after coming back here, um, I was, I asked the Lord, I was like, Lord, why did I, why did you also, the DTS was in the South of France and like they contacted me. I didn't even know that there was a DTS in the South wow. of France. I thought it was only in like Mexico and like in America. Um, and so I just asked him that question of like, why Why did you bring me to the South of France? And he was like, I brought you to the South of France. I brought you to the, that DTS to show you that you're actually still passionate about the table. Wow. You're still passionate about food. And I was like, you took me to the culinary capital of the world yeah. to tell me that that dream I had when I was a, when I was a young girl is still a desire of mine because you placed it there. Mm. Um. And so, yeah, from then on, like, I just started back into the kitchen and started cooking again. Mm. Um, and, yeah, that's how it started, and that's how it, like, continued. Um, and, I don't know, something about being at a table with friends just feels really safe to me mm. and feels really – my one of my top love languages is quality time. And so – Quality time around a table with either like one person or like six people just like meets my quality time tank. Mm. Um, and even getting to be the person who cooks the meal and like getting to share that with other people and like us just talking about random things or about intentional things through something that I made and I don't know, something about it just makes my heart really joyful. And I don't know, it's just been a really big passion of mine. Well, that's huge because I think also, just Lana, even when you were talking about uh, your, your, our, your comment about being in, in a cafe, like I'm not really passionate about <laughs> coffee, but I am about food, about people, yeah. serving, hosting people, even people who are walking in and then walking out. 
but mm-hmm. knowing you, you probably had your regulars who you knew what they I wanted did, and yep. how they did it and mm-hmm. figured out that. And I think that's, you know, one of the statements that Carrie and I make is all the time is life happens around tables. Yeah. So whether it's a coffee table or cafe mm-hmm. table, even a, uh, a like a meeting table, like a boardroom table, um, but also like the table um, is such a central meeting place where people do build heart connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And let their guards down. Yep. Yep. And yep. how hosting people um, can be so such a powerful tool at dealing with heart connections yeah. and building heart connections. You know, uh, Carrie and I love to uh, – we've been hosting um, – we host Shabbat meals. So on Friday nights. And, and really, that's a fun way of – and sometimes they're super silly and we're playing games and telling stories and laughing. And sometimes we're like – we got people weeping at our tables, yeah. burying their souls. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think even Shabbat was a way that God set up a family time. No matter what, every week, you know, you're going to be doing this together around a table. Yeah. And I think food is not only a metaphor. I mean, it, it, there's, you know, there's something true to, you know, the, the quickest ma- way to a man's heart is through his <laughs> stomach, right? But I think it's just true, it's true. for people, right? Yeah. And so... Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I love that. I love it. and um, what do you? A couple of challenges that you would give to people listening to this podcast who go, oh, I don't, I don't know if I like cooking, or you know, mm-hmm. or what can they learn about what you've learned about the table? Hmm. I would say it doesn't. Start small. Like, it doesn't have to be something like as you cooking a five-course meal for your friends. Four detox waters. Right. Which I love (laughs) that. Four detox waters. I love it. Um, Dude, that is so creative. I love that. um, So I think even, like, down to you setting the table Mm. or, like, putting, like, name cards on each of the plates or – I don't know. Like it could be really, really small. It doesn't have to be this big thing. Um, yeah, or even like go out of your comfort zone and like make bread or make the salad. If you don't like cooking, start off small. I'm not mm. asking you to make a beef Wellington. You can make like a salad or like I don't know, bring a drink that you a mocktail or something. Um, I think even if you start there and like experience how other people are um, reacting to what you made. Maybe that will yeah. up the ante. But That's good. Yeah. Start simple. Start simple, yeah. And uh, it sounds like not only experiment. Yeah. That's what you did, right? Yeah. You had – it sounds like you were intuitive on what to put together with food, but you probably also have some meals that you were like, yeah, that didn't work. For sure. Um, so start simple. Mm-hmm. Um, be intentional. Yeah. I hear, you know, like Just small things. Just be willing things. to try right. something. Yeah. And if it fails, that's okay. Um, what, what advice would you give to people who may be listening to this podcast who have been deeply affected and infected with Fairfield County rush culture? Like, what do you say? You know, like you said, sitting at table for hours. That is not our culture. Yeah, it's not. Nope. What did, it's not. What have you learned and what advice would you give on that? Um... Like, just about the table and, like, general of, like, slowing down. Anything you want to share on that? Well, I heard something from John Mark Comer in mm-hmm. his book, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. He gives you, like, different, like, tasks you, you can do to slow down mm. from the hurry culture. Um, and one of them is, like, waiting at a stop sign instead of just, like, driving and then, like, speeding off. But, like, actually stopping, coming to a full stop. And then go. Um, I don't think that's ever been done in Fairfield County ever. Right, right. We're right. we're the land that 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 teaches people if a stop sign has a white border, it's optional. Right, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, right. Yeah. So like that could be one. Um, also, chewing slowly. <laughs> I was listening to his podcast recently, which is why it's like all in my head. But like, yeah, like we we chew fast. Like it's true. We got to get this food, like, we got to hurry up and carry on with the next thing. But, like, chewing slowly, 
even at a at a table mm. instead of like being the first one done so that you could pack up your stuff and carry on to whatever else you got to do. Right. Um, and yeah, I, I would say like lingering at a table, even though like maybe you're done or like you want to go do something else, maybe like intentionally staying there, being present and like asking someone, how was your day today? Just a couple ideas. I love that. Yeah. And look them in the eyes. And look them in the eyes. And watch them squirm. Yes. I mean, <laughs> people know. people really don't do eyes. No, contact. they don't. They really don't. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh but how powerful that is. Yeah. It's because so powerful. because just Lonnie, it, it's recognizing the person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the same way you're saying, hey, I'm intentional about, even one of the things I'm intentional about is setting a table now for the person. I'm writing their names down. I'm doing this for an interview. I'm honoring them with my time. It's also yeah. you're honoring them with the value of looking them in the eyes. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. that's, that is a powerful thing. I would say you look so at someone powerful. in the eyes and smile. That's it's the other so thing powerful. we just don't do in our culture. Yeah. Or they think you're a weirdo or what are you trying to do? Yep. Like, but um, how powerful that is. Um, because also, and I think this is something that you were alluding to and I, that I've seen is sometimes learning how to, like we were joking, like they, they get awkward, they get uncomfortable. Yeah. But over time, it actually is disarming because you're still saying, I see you and I'm still, I'm still here. Yeah, for sure. And I want to spend time with you. Yeah. And I'm not trying to just rush you out the door or whatever. Yeah. That was, that was something that, that it sounds like you learned in the culture of 18 and journey mm-hmm. yeah that you're you're trying to infuse in the culture in, in my life in your life yeah and in those years that's really powerful it was hard for us moving to australia hmm. because um going to restaurants was a very different thing first of all the food is amazing yeah except their pizza um <laughs> <laughs> connecticut spoils you for good pizza yeah but one of the things was in in america especially where tips is part of the service industry, Mm -hmm. um, getting people in and out fast is part of it so that you can make more money. And even for servers, they're relying on tips. The more turnover you have, the more money you make. Where in Australia, they pay their service industry a much higher hourly rate, and there is no tips. So a waitress or a waiter is going to get, you know, 20 bucks an hour, Mm -hmm. regardless of how many tables they serve a night. They're just getting an hour so that people just linger. Yeah. And they will, it's, uh, it's not uncommon to go, hey, let's go out to dinner at a place and you're there for three hours. Right. That was so weird for us. Yeah. Like, because people are like, you know, the waitress is cleaning up and bringing your check within 35 minutes, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not their fault. I'm not blaming them. Yeah. But learning how to have ongoing conversation that does get beyond, how you doing? How's work? What's life like? You know, yeah. that you, like now you're running out of things word. to talk. You yeah. know, you got to, you know, get to the heart of the matter. Yeah. yeah. It's important. It's so it's cool. so needed. Yeah. Um, I want to make an observation. I have seen sure. the change in you since you've come back. Mm. I've seen you become more yourself, and I've actually seen you become more comfortable with who God's called you to be. Yeah. Um, and um, that's really powerful. So uh, I want to encourage you <laughs> that even though phase one is done, phase two is done, Jesus has phase three, <laughs> he uh, does, yeah. uh, you know, here in the adventure. And I think part of that is, is continuing to model for the rest of us, the yeah. heart journey that God's put on display for you. So that's awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, I'm stoked uh, for what's next for you in teaching us um, how to... Uh, to live life around a table. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we didn't prepare you for this, but I hope you're okay with this. Okay. <laughs> so can you do us a favor? We we believe in blessing here, and I'd love to have you close by looking into the camera over there and just releasing a blessing over people. Yeah. And um, however you feel led um, with what God has, has done in your life, releasing it towards the rest of us. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I'll go for it anytime you're ready. Let's go. Yeah, Lord, I just bless um, people right now watching, listening, um, to know the Jesus that sits with them at the table, to know the Jesus that is not in a rush, and to know the Jesus that gives them eye contact. Lord, I bless people to know um, 
the unhurried pace of life. Um, yeah, Lord, I bless people to um, this week to just choose to um, not be in a hurry and actually look at that person in the eye and actually be intentional with their conversation. Um, yeah, Lord, I bless everyone listening in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jislani. You're, You're the best. This was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, listening, and being a part of this podcast and this series of podcasts that we have at the Sanctuary CT uh, YouTube channel, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. Please do us a huge favor, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. If you live in the Fairfield County area, we'd love to have you join us if you're a young adult or in that age bracket at Sanctuary at Black Rock Church at five o'clock on Sunday nights, um, where we get to worship the Lord together and we challenge each other in how we can walk with Him. If you don't live in the area, please join us for online services or keep checking back for other resources um, at Sanctuary CT or we our sanctuary on Instagram. So glad to have you guys be a part of what God is doing here in this generation. Have an awesome day and God bless you.